I'm Dr James Brown, I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Biology at Aston University. Today's talk is about looking into the future for diabetic eye disease and we're going to cover several sections. So we'll start off by talking about the epidemiology of diabetes, particularly um, over the last 30 years how we've seen dramatic growth in the prevalence of diabetes of all different types. I'm then going to teach you about something that I think is particularly scary and that's a new and emerging form of diabetes. We're seeing about one third of our children who are either overweight or obese. We've never seen this before and what it means is we've got people kind of having lifelong obesity so all those diseases or conditions associated with obesity are happening earlier. Instead of getting diabetes in your 50s and 60s people are getting it in their 20s and 30s. Type 2 diabetes in the young adult we call it T2DMY. So this is um, something that's been recorded and spoken about really only in the last 15 to 20 years. We all eat too much, we all eat the wrong things, we spend too much time sat down on our backsides and not moving about and the combination of these factors has led to us being pretty much the fattest nation, fattest nation in Europe. So 66% of us as a population are overweight or obese but as I say in children the worrying thing is we've gone from having almost no obesity to having you know, over a million obese children in the UK as we speak right now. As we're all aware, we're pinched for money, to put it politely, in the NHS at the minute, and yet we spend 10% of the entire NHS budget treating people with diabetes. So that's around £12 billion per year. So if you imagine for a minute that the um, epidemiology of diabetes is going to change and we're going to see an increase in the number of people with diabetes that's not just going to have an impact on the individuals diagnosed and on people like yourselves that, that will be working in practice with people with complications of diabetes but it means it could effectively bankrupt the NHS. Diabetic retinopathy is a leading cause of blindness and that's in a population of established diabetics. If you start thinking about children, teenagers, people in their 20s getting diabetic retinopathy, you're going to see an increase in vision loss and blindness due to that. So it's actually incumbent on all of us, on scientists like myself, on clinicians that work with diabetics, but also on people in the optometry community to work together to make sure that, okay, if we've got more people with diabetes, let's try and stop them getting the complications that could lead to loss of vision. So why is this happening? Well, the reason is probably linked to this. So we now have um, a really easy to spot childhood obesity problem in the UK to the point that our children actually leave school more overweight or obese than when they go to school. So at the minute, currently in year six children, I think this is, um, around a third of them are overweight or obese, which is really worrying. And what this means is for the first time in the history of human beings, we've got individuals who are obese for almost their entire lifespan because we are singularly bad at treating obesity. Really, in terms of optometry, it's about making sure that you're willing to spot the signs of an individual that has diabetic eye disease because you're going to see younger people, people you may not think are likely to be diabetic that may have signs of diabetic eye disease at the back of the eye. So when you're doing that dilated pupil eye exam, try and look for any changes in the vasculature at the back of the eye. If somebody comes in and they're reporting a rapid loss of a function in the eye, if uh, their eyesight's changed very quickly and they've got diabetes, it's about signposting them so they can see their GP or their diabetes specialist because this may be a sign that they're getting diabetic eye disease. I wanted to try and finish on something positive <laughs> because this isn't a fait accompli, it doesn't have to happen because if we at a, a governmental legislative level as family members of children if we can try and change the way in which we approach food uh, physical activity and sedentary behavior we can actually prevent this from happening we can reduce the rates of childhood obesity and we can prevent a tsunami of diabetes from hitting the country 